Hello everyone, I'm John Schultz. I'm the owner chef of the Lake Elmo Inn. Today's topic, what we're gonna talk about today is thickening agents. How to thicken a soup, how to thicken a sauce. And for the lack of the fact that we don't have an hour to do this class, we're going to scale this down and try to be as practical and, and, and easy for you to understand and to use. So there's a number of thickening agents that we do use. And I'm gonna give you the very best to start with. Thickening agents are basically, in old classical cooking, is letting the food thicken itself. So if you had a cream of cauliflower soup, you take and you, you cook the cauliflower until you can put it in the blender and, and the cauliflower thickens itself. You use split peas, you use lentils, you use navy beans. Those beans, and when you cook them, it thickens the soup itself. That's the most natural way you can thicken a, any type of a sauce, any type of a soup but we don't always have that ways and means to do it. So then we resort to other things such as ruse, flour, cornstarch. Um, there are a few others that are out there, but those are probably so obscure that you, you know, it's a different type of a root that would you, be used to thicken. So what I've got here for you is a couple of different ones. Cornstarch is one, if you have a gluten-free allergy, if you want to try to get away from flour, cornstarch is a great way to do it. The best way to do cornstarch is that you make a slurry. So uh, here is some cornstarch, and you're gonna use cold water. And a slurry is basically, it is just the cornstarch and the water, and it doesn't have to be water. If you're making a white wine sauce, you don't have to use water. Use white wine in this so you don't dilute your stock that you have to make your sauce uh, or your soup. Now that's my cornstarch and now we do the same with flour. Flour is uh, you make a slurry. Now this is probably the most, not the most uh, classical way to do something, but it has been done and in my family, my parents grew up on a farm and this is the way my mother and grandmother would make their gravy sitting over the great big roasting pan after they took the turkey out or they took the roast out and then they would make this slurry and then they would drizzle this in. They would drizzle that into, into the, the, the stock and I'll quick, we're gonna quick do it. As you can see, I have a couple of pans here and let's call this my chicken stock and my beef stock. But for all practical purposes this morning, I'm just using water, okay? And most stocks are liquid. Uh, they're just flavored and flavored with wonderful bones and mirepoix and, and herbs and spices. But uh, you'll never know how thick your sauce is gonna be until it comes to a boil. So this should not take us very long to get that to a boil. So I'm gonna do that in just a second. And then the next is going to be a roux. And a roux is flour and butter. Now butter, you're adding an element of, of, of flavor. You're adding a lot of calories but that flavor outweighs the calories in my book. Roux is very classical. Corn, or flour and water is not, but it does do the job. So now you see my water. It's starting to come to a boil, and I need it to be a boil when I put this in. And, and uh, put it in slowly. You don't wanna put in too much. Is there a rule of thumb of how much to put? I'm pretty sure there is. Unfortunately, this morning I don't have that because this is the way I do it. So you can see my water is boiling. I am gonna just pour this in. And I don't know how thick it's gonna be until it comes back to a boil. Now you see how it is, that's what a flour and water does. Now if that was a nice brown stock, it would not look so anemic looking because it, again, it is just flour. And that would be the thickness that it will come down to, and it, it could get thicker if you let it reduce more. But right now, that is it. Um, so that is that one, and I'll show you the difference between that and then now my cornstarch. I use a lot of cornstarch here. We have a soup called the wild rice and duck soup, and it's our specialty soup here. And uh, I had a true celiac. He said, why can't you make that soup for me? And this was maybe seven, eight years ago. And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I said, I could use cornstarch. So I made her some and it was just, it was just as good. 
and I can now feed everyone our, our wild rice and duck soup because I make it gluten free all the time. So look at that one. You got a nice thickness to that and you got a nice thickness here. You can see the difference in colors. Flour over the cornstarch. But you put it in, you bring it back to a boil and that's when you realize how thick your sauce is gonna be. Be a little, take a little bit at a time. If you pour a lot of that and then it's all, it's all overly thick and real gelatinous, then you're gonna add more liquid to it and then you're gonna dilute and you're gonna lose the quality of your sauce. So with those two done, I mentioned to you that we have the, the roux. Now the roux is, is flour and butter. Now I use clarified butter, as you can see, this is all liquefied butter because the butter that, the butter um, has milk solids into it and that's that white stuff that's coming out, that's liquid. And when you make a roux, you have the, the, the butter and the flour and you, if you add liquid to it, it's instantly gonna start thickening up. So that's why I don't use those milk solids because I'd have to, I, it would change the quality of that roux and it wouldn't give me the roux that I'm looking for. So now I'm gonna add, it's about 50-50. It's 50% butter to 50% flour. And then you get your roux. And then I'll show you the different qualities and characteristics of this roux as we're cooking. Okay. You can have too much flour and you can be too runny. And flour or roux, if I remember correctly, it's eight ounces of flour to eight ounces of butter. And that is about a, a perfect blend because I mentioned to you it's 50-50. And then you have to, they call it, you cooking your roux. And, and uh, what you want to do is you want to cook some of that flavor, that, that raw flour flavor that you get. Uh, of, a, of a cook or a chef put too much flour and didn't cook it out and he put it into a sauce, you're going to taste that or if you're going to do it in your soup. So now that it's all frothy, it's pretty well that I can use to make a light colored soup. Now if I'm going to make a dark color soup, and this is where the, the Cajuns and the Louisiana people have done such wonderful things, they change the color of their roux, changes the flavor of their sauce. You get that nutty, chestnut the flavor of, of the browning of the flour in the butter, and it, 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 it is wonderful, and it takes it down to different degrees. I had the opportunity to meet Paul Herdome a number of times, and that's what he talked about all the time was the different stages and the different layering of seasonings that he puts in at different, at different intervals. As you can see, it's starting to brown. I don't want to use a brown roux in a light colored sauce or a cream sauce, but this is as good as it gets as far as um, thickening up a sauce. So that roux, that roux, if you put it in your cooler after you're made it, you don't want to throw butter away because that's expensive. So you have, you have your roux, can last weeks, especially when it's in the cooler. All you have to do is take it out, bring it back up to temperature, get it hot, and then add that a little bit at a time in your, in your stock. So enough said with that. When you have one more classical way of French cooking is uh, this one I've got to have to verbally describe to you. So let's say you're cooking chicken in a pan and then you add your stock to that and you're reducing that down and reducing it down and reducing it down and you're getting to the flavor just where you want but you say, God, it's awful thin yet. Then you take a dab of butter. You turn off your burner, you add a dab or a tablespoon of butter to, to your stock and then you just whip that in in your pan. And I'm talking about a pan, a pan like this and it's individual orders. You don't want to do a butter sauce for five gallons. You want to do a butter sauce that's going to finish. Then you put it, in the, put it in the stock, you thicken your sauce, you put it over your food and then out it goes to the customer or out it goes to your family. That is the class, a very classical way of doing a nice sauce and finishing it the way maybe the French would. I brought this out to show you that over the years, I've had some cooks that have had trouble developing sauces that had lumps in them. 
uh, they're called rue balls, believe it or not, rue balls, little balls of rue or little balls of flour and water, and it develops in a, st in a stock, and if it's not beaten out, you're gonna need to strain it, or you can use, this is called an immersion blender. And an immersion blender, you just take this and you put it in there and it just blends it all together and with those little blades on the bottom, it chops it all up and you have a nice fine sauce. So having an immersion blender at home I think is important. Um, we have one here that is that long and it goes into those kettles and it will it will, like when I make my red sauce, my spaghetti sauce, I do it in this kettle and I'm making probably 10 gallons at a time. It grinds up all the peppers, all the onions, all the garlic, and it makes it nice and smooth to go along with the tomatoes. And it's a wonderful, wonderful device. So again, a recap, one other thing. I don't have it here today, but it's arrowroot. Arrowroot is another one that you can buy from the store. It's a tuber, it's a root vegetable, a root that, that they use to produce uh, arrowroot and it, thickening, it thickens op, uh, uh, stocks and soups and sauces. It thickens it and it's a qu higher quality than the cornstarch. And you'll find that when I say higher quality generally means higher price tag. But it does have some different properties that make it a little bit different. But be careful on some arrow roots out there. I think for cutting costs, they'll add potato starch for some reason. Now, if you can't have potatoes, then don't, you know, look at the label and make sure you're getting pure arrow root. Arrow root is really a fine thickening agent and you don't need as much as you do with this. You don't need as much of this as you do with flour. Um, and then butter, again, is just a finishing thing. And then roux, you add that is the same principles as the whitewash and the cornstarch. You add it a little at a time and get it to the thickness you want, or just a little bit less and then let the sauce or stock reduce down to get the thickness that you want. So with that, I hope I've helped you and saved you, uh, answered some of your questions, maybe saved you some time down the road when you have your time to make your Thanksgiving gravy or, or to make a sauce or a soup, a thick soup. But again, remember, the best way is let Mother Nature do it and let the vegetables thicken its own soup. Putting all your tomatoes or eggplant or using things like that to help thicken your soups that you're making, a wonderful, wonderful way of doing fine cooking. That's your insider tip today. Thank you for joining.